I am one of those elusive millennials that the church is always worried about. Supposedly, I'm part of that apathetic generation, that socially isolated generation, that generation that technology has ruined and our parents have spoiled. And I'm also supposed to be of the colorblind generation. While many people of color learn at a very young age what race means for them, I didn't really learn I was white until college. While theoretically I was aware of race, I had been taught to see no differences. I was taught that we were all the same. That was the polite thing to do. In high school, I believed we should all just get along, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and pull your pants up too while you're at it. And I knew I could ignore those tidbits of history that I learned in February because they wouldn't be on the final exam anyway. But when I got to college, I joined a Christian fellowship on campus, and I would not have gone to that year's women's retreat had I known we would be talking about race. I figured that conversation wasn't for me, that it was more for other people, that it was divisive. But if I hadn't, by God's grace, found my way to that event, I would not have heard about our God that loves color, loves our culture, and wants us to learn from one another. I learned that we worship a triune God, perfectly diverse and perfectly united. I learned we worship a God of the oppressed. And I learned that through my isolated dominant culture lens, I could see only dimly the true character of the God I worshiped. And that launched a journey. I learned how race and ethnicity affected the daily lives of those around me. I learned the history that I wasn't taught in school. I read the books I had always passed over in the library. I found out about the school to prison pipeline and stand your ground, about internment camps and exclusion acts, about continents and countries laid to ruin, about broken treaties and trails of tears, about dreamers trying to get to college and children at our border, and about the millions who were colonized and told that their own culture was not appropriate for worshiping our white God. I once was colorblind, but now I see. And then I moved to Columbus, Ohio to start a doctorate in neuroscience, an unrelated life filled with glass beakers, petri dishes, and molecular genetics. In my case, I can assure you that all the stereotypes about scientists are true. It felt like the smart choice goodbye to so much that resonated with my soul. But I was good at it. I liked the lab and the lab liked me. So I turned to the digital world to continue my racial education, to serve as the professors of justice and theology that I never had. I started my own blog to hold me accountable and to help me continue to learn. It's called By Their Strange Fruit, after the Billie Holiday song, and the verse in Matthew that says, ye shall know them by their fruit, because I believe it is no hyperbole to say that people are being killed in our own backyards because of the church's inability to bear prophetic fruit to the nations. Too often, we bear strange fruit instead. It was during this time that my husband and I joined United Methodist Church for All People, which is a multi-race and multi-class church on the south side of Columbus. We joined out of a belief that isolating ourselves among believers of similar backgrounds just deprives our own souls of God's majesty. We came for selfish reasons, just to relish in the koinonia that the Church for All People provides in a setting that is tragically so rare. We moved onto the block to be in relationship with the surrounding community and to sit at the feet of those who could show us the face of Christ. We adopted a value of downward mobility, not as a charitable endeavor, but one fundamental to our own souls. During our short time in Columbus, we started building relationships at Church for All People. Through open mic night, I could be both an opera nerd and a gospel praiser, and I began conducting our gospel choir. We named it Ubuntu, which means I am because we are. And then when the director of music moved away, I began to work part-time for the church in that role, leading multicultural worship music in every style you can imagine and in many languages as well. 
at Church for All People, we want our music to reflect every aspect of who we are, as well as who we aspire to be, even if only upon reaching heaven. And after a couple of years, I became involved in the work of G Corps to live into our all people values across the country and around the globe. I was working with like-minded people doing diligent work for justice and reconciliation. However, the time came for interviews, professorships, and publications, and I told the pastor it would soon be time for us to move away. But he said, I just want to hold a mirror to your life and how you're spending all your extra time, all your extra energy, your passion. I think you might have some tough choices about your life path ahead. And I replied, no, nah, pastor, you don't understand. That's not how it works in academia. I haven't come all this way just to leave it now. He gently replied, think about it. Just think about it. Once I started thinking about it, I couldn't stop because Jesus is a troublemaker and he would not let me go. My lab mates thought I was foolish and my family had their questions, but I have never felt something so good, so right, as giving my all to the work of building the front porch to the kingdom of God, and it set me back on my heels. When I finally decided to leave neuroscience to work in ministry full time, it was the easiest hard decision I've ever made because I am of that generation that would rather do something meaningful than something marketable. That generation that would rather make a difference than make a profit, that values authenticity over apathy. I am of that generation that has been woken up by Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Sandra Bland, Ayani Jones, Tamir Rice, Tyree King, Freddie Gray, Maya Young, John Crawford, and Eric Garner, won't you say their names? I am of that generation that is tired of my sisters and brothers being used as mascots and as Halloween costumes, that knows that undocumented doesn't mean unloved or unworthy. I am of that generation that wants to be known by the content of our character, sure, but also by the beauty of the differences that make us who we are as well that wants to be known not for ignoring the issues, but for seeing them and facing them head on. We are not a colorblind generation. We know we are not all eyes, we are not all ears, we are not all hands or feet, and thank God that in God's wisdom we are not. And I am of that generation that wants my church to believe in that vision as well that knows we can't have open minds, open hearts, open doors while we still have closed borders. I want my church to remember that love is what happens when justice and mercy kiss. I want my church to cling to the vision that one day in heaven, every tribe, every tongue, every nation will worship before the throne and that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. So that's why I'm here today because I love Christ Church. And because I love, I want us to be better. And together, we can do that. Amen.